what we have here is, well, the Orchard setup screen. So as you can see, it's, well, it looks pretty simple, but le or, or at least there are not many things on it. Uh, so let's start. Well, what is the name of your site? This is pretty self-explanatory. So let's just name our site. Um, don't worry, um, almost everything uh, here we can change later. Not everything. I will tell you about that. So uh, let's call it Orchard Orchard Dojo Wars 2 Demo. Uh, we also need to set up a user account to begin with. So, well, um, just as in any CMS, Orchard also have um, user accounts and provides login functionality out of, out of the box. And we will need a basic super user and admin um, login account that can do everything uh, at setup time. We can change this later as well. Uh, we can change the name, we can change the password, we can add other administrative users and we can remove this. But as of now, we need the fun. Uh, for the password, I will use password because that's uh, that's the best practice out there, as everybody knows. So it will be admin and password. Next question: How would you like to store your data? Orchard, um, of course, needs some kind of data store, so some uh, some mechanism to store all the content we save in the system. And for this, it supports a variety of uh, database engines, well, SQL database engines. Uh, one of the easiest things we can uh, use, and this is what we'll use um, for the purpose of this course as well, is SQL Server Compact. SQL Server Compact, it works like a standard SQL database for most of the cases, but it's just a file. It doesn't need anything, it will store all the data in a flat file. Now, of course, this is not something you would, uh, you would use in a, in a high high um, performance, uh, popular production application, but for basic science and especially for local development, it's good enough. Otherwise, we could use a standard SQL Server or SQL, Ex SQL Server Express database. Um, if you are familiar with that, you know that uh, to connect to, to such a database, you will need a connection string, so we will need to supply it here. And furthermore, we can also configure a database table prefix. Now, multiple application can, applications can use the same database. Even multiple Orchard applications can use the same database. We also see how this happens, by the way, um, on later you know, lessons. But here, you can uh, configure um, a prefix that will be appended to the the beginning of each table name. So in the database, you will be able to uh, filter on that for just this application. Um, we could also use MySQL or PostgreSQL um, as the database, well, which has similar uh, or which have similar configuration options, but we will just stick with SQL Server Compact. And the last thing is is that we need to choose a so-called recipe, and as you can see. We have three options here. Now, what is the recipe? A recipe is basically an XML file that contains or can contain uh, content and configuration uh, related to Orchard. It can also execute commands on the system. So basically, um, it's also an export format. So you can export an Orchard's content, an Orchard website's content and configuration to a recipe. And secondly, such recipes or, or selected recipes can also be used uh, during setup time. Um, setup recipes can kind of cook a website, however with setup recipes you can cook a website uh, to an extent. So these recipes will provide some default configuration content for us. Well, uh, the blog will configure a blog. The core recipe is just the very bare bone. It doesn't contain uh, pretty much anything, just the, the essentials. What we'll use is the default recipe, which contains some sample content and, uh, and it has all the basic useful modules uh, enabled. So when we click Finish Setup, the setup will run. You also see that Orchard is cooking our recipe, which is kind of a 
queued for the game. And uh, once this finishes in a few seconds, we will see our freshly cooked portrait website, which also happened. And I will just save the, the password because it's quite complicated and I won't be able to remember it for next time. So, uh, that's what we see uh, once the default recipe is executed. Does this happen, or did this happen for everyone? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what we see here is uh, some sample content that our default recipe has given us. Uh, this whole thing here is a so-called page, uh, which has different sections, as you can see. Um, this, these are called elements, by the way, and we will see how such pages are edited um, yeah, very shortly. But otherwise, um, here at the bottom we have some links, Well, we could sign out. Uh, when we click this user um, username, uh, we can change our password. But we don't won't do because just password is good enough, of course. And we can go to the dashboard. Now this is the most interesting thing. Uh, as you can see, we went to slash admin. Now uh, by default, the admin area of Orchard is under slash admin, where administrator users like the one we created can log in. And well, you can change everything that you are able to change as a user here on the admin screen. On the, um, well, in this mid section we have some static widgets. Um, these, are, these are never changing, well, apart from uh, the one that indicates the latest version. version. Um, so, not much interesting here. But on the left we have well, the admin menu. And as you can see, um, while the default recipe hasn't enabled absolutely everything in Orchard, still we have quite many menu items. We'll go through the most important ones uh, a bit later, but for now, now let's take a look at this settings menu here. This can be also opened, and as you can see there are even more settings, but first let's take a look at the basic settings. So I'm, I'm just clicking settings. You can see that uh, we have the site name, which we could change here, as I promise. Uh, we could also change the base URL, well, which is the, the root URL of the application. As you can see, this was automatically filled uh, during setup from the current default local URL. Um, this is um, only used to, to build certain links, so it's not that important right now. Um, I also mentioned that there is localization in Orchard. And that also means that we can have multiple cultures in a website. By default, Orchard uses the US culture, but we could add new cultures here. So if I click this add or remove supported cultures for this site, we could add, for example, the Hungarian one. Oops. Here. I selected it and I'm now adding it. If we go back, if you go back to the settings, we see that now we can change the default site culture to Hungarian. Now, changing this alone wouldn't do much. If we take a look at the source code, which we can do with Control U, we see that um, well, the culture is indicated in the HTML tags um, attribute as well. Basically. That's the only thing that would be apparent uh, to change when we change this. Um, some, some, some date displays would also change, but the language of the site wouldn't change. For that, we would need to install localization packages. Uh, how to do that, uh, we will uh, probably see later, but it's also, also um, explained on the Orchard website. Well, uh, we have similar localization settings for the calendars used on the website as well. So we have some date pickers uh, and some date configurations. This is uh, uh, used there. We also have a time zone, a time zone configuration. Now, um, everything in Orchard is stored 
every every date and time in order to store in UTC in universal coordinated time. But everything is displayed in the site's time zone or in 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 the time zone uh, dynamically selected for the request. Um, by default, well, the default time zone will be used for everything. So in this case, uh, the UTC plus one hour. Well, uh, we could also change the page title separator, which is kind of a, a basic feature. Uh, well, uh, if if you uh, take a look at uh, the top bar in the browser, you see that uh, there is this dash between uh, between uh, the the site's name and the settings uh, screen's title. Well, we could change that. Cool feature, yeah. Uh, we could usually change the admin user, but as mentioned, um, this is this is the one we created during setup. But as mentioned, we can add as many administrator users as we wish. We'll see user uh, management a bit later. Um, resource debug mode uh, and what resources are we'll cover later, just as what CDNs are. And um, lastly, we can configure how how many items to display in various ways in Orchard. This is again some basic size setting. Uh, by default, or should we display 10 of everything? So, for example, if you are looking at a blog, there will be 10 blog posts on one page by default. But this is well, changeable here and also configurable in a variative ways, and you as a developer can also override that in a variative ways. Um, that's it for now. Um, this was the basic orchard setup and the basic orchard settings. Next, we will cover some of the still basic features, but getting a bit deeper.